I think it's been four weeks since we've been down here. And uh, I've actually had three weeks off, kind of, in between trying to sort customers out and things. So it's been a bit stressful, even though I've had some time away. We went away to France, to Benaday. I hope you enjoyed the video of that, um, or the videos of that. Um, trying to fill the space while I'm away with something boaty oriented. Um, and yeah, sort of mixes the channel up a little bit. It's horrendously muddy here and there's car tyre prints everywhere. So don't really know what's been going on here, but uh, maybe with the rain we've had, I don't know really what the rain's been like here. It does look a bit wet. We had a little bit of rain this morning we weren't supposed to have on the way here. Um, but um, yeah, it's going to make life a little bit mucky. We'll, we'll live. There's Lulu, and look at her. She's sitting with that second chine down above the water, where she should be. As you'll see, her one of her sister's draggle tail, which is usually on that mooring there, is, got, is not there. She's at Ull's Water, where we should be today, or should have been this week. But unfortunately, Mabel, our lovely little camper van, who is fine she's made it here today and i've got a little piece of software now that monitors temperatures on her so she was fine um but she's struggling to tow the lugger at the moment uh with an overheating gearbox and uh but we're sorting it and we should sort it pretty soon hopefully in the next couple of weeks totally um but uh, for now, she's still okay just driving carefully and we're going to start getting some wheel and parts changed tomorrow. So she'll be great. We've got to get that water out, haven't we? Because that's not going to do her any good. My brand new cover no longer looks brand new, but there we go. Let's have a look at this skeg. Now the paint's... Oh yeah, you can feel that paint so lovely and hard and dry now. I mean, quite frankly, other than the fact that there's brush strokes there where normally everything else is rollered, you wouldn't know that anything had happened. So really chuffed with that. Really chuffed that I was able to fix that. I'm really, really pleased again that Les uh, machined me a new skeg from the original mirror uh, drawing. So thanks again, <laughs> Les. I just thought, if we're going to have a sail in Mocking D, we at least need a little bit of wind to uh, to have a sail in Mocking D. So I'm not going to touch her today. Um, what we are going to do, though, um, is focus today on the battery box. And we've got all the bits here. We're going to try and take that as far as we can today. And you might notice I've got, this is Mocking D's jib. And I've been doing some calculations with this jib. Um, and I've got to do this off the top of my head now. But um, roughly, the mirror jib is roughly half the size or, or area as the lugger jib. Which kind of makes sense. And that got me thinking, with all this talk about flying jibs and whatnot, we might just be able to rig that up as a flying jib today so and actually having no wind is exactly what i want the flying jib for um so hmm, let's see we'll see if we can do something today i've got the autopilot we do need to sort of hook that up to the battery though ah oh, looking good she's actually touching the bottom of tickle here so just got to be a little bit careful when I board her. Um, everything's great. Um, you can see, if I just tilt her, you may just be able to see, there you go, a bit of water under there. But that's four weeks of rain. You know it's rain because it's clear. If it, was, if it was lake water, you'd see a green hue to it. Anyway, here's the bow spree. Takes me literally two minutes to set up. The hardest part is just making sure these are the right tension. So it's not kind of pointing out to the side. It's served me quite well so far. I don't know how it would be in heavier weather with, for instance, a little jib, flying jib. But for the, um, 
for uh, say, uh, flying the spinnaker asymmetrically. It's been brilliant. These are my 3D printed Hank holder honors because these do have a tendency to come up. They've worked brilliantly. Now, that is actually the halyard for the, the jib, the jib. So we'll just get that out the way. Gosh, you can see how small the mirror is when you look at all the halyards in there. This should now come away. So, uh, the shroud clips come in two forms. One's just a simple flush clip. And this one I just did with a little hole in it for if you wanted to have a little down horse, if you're cruising, you, you know, you want to be able to bring your jib down quite easily from the cabin. So that's why I've got the two, the two versions. So now we need to get this hoisted up. So the halyard for the spinnaker lives here, just clips off there. Just checking it's free and you make sure it's not tangled up around the, the jib halyard. So this will now hoist up like this, and this will be the leading edge of the sail. And I'm going to leave these hanks on. I can take them off, but I don't really want to. And then what we've got to do is attach this part of the sail to the bowsprit. Flip that to the front. And now we'll hoist the sail, see what that gives us. I've noticed we are floating out here so I'm just going to alter the boat so we're a bit closer to the van. That's it. There we go. Right, let's try again. Let's pull it from here. So there we go. That's how it looks. Too low. So I think it needs to be about 30 centimeters maybe. So let's bring this back down. Yeah, I think that's the right size. So we'll do that. I'll just do a little almost like round turn and two half hitches there. So it's a bit more permanent. That's about there. These jib sheets have seen better days, really. They've got little bits of them poking out all over the place. <laughs> this one, it's not great, is it? But anyway, they'll do for now. Now, what I'm told is you need to sheet these further back. And what some people do is put a, like an eye bolt, similar, actually, probably identical to what I've got on the back here, on the motor pad. You can actually bolt an eye bolt in there bolt it in so you've got a lovely bolt and then you can sheet this here in fact we could just probably just for testing sheet it through because you've got a lovely these clam cleats are uh, the reverse aren't they oh no they're not ah i've got one of these this side but i haven't got one the other side because this is the other side of my um tiller tamer but with that's roughly what you do so you get the angle out the way of that jib sheet so now i think what we need to do is get the main jib unfurled just have a little look see what what it looks like right so that will be to get the jib out keep the furling line tight as you do it Something's not happy. So actually, while we've got no wind, let's have a look. I think one of the reasons you have a, a flying jib and why it works is it's for two reasons, more sail area, but also it creates a, another slot between sails. So when you've got your main up, you've got three slots and that in itself kind of creates a lot more lift out the sail. So um, I'm not entirely scientifically sure exactly why that works and what, why that's good 
I'm not a kind of wind engineer, but I think that sail there looks like it's giving a really good slot and it looks about, if anything, it's a bit big. And then let's sort of lift these lines. I'm gonna try not to get these lines wet just in case, but let's just get the, the line out there. And we'll get this line out here. So, oh, hang on, I've got to undo the other jib sheet. So let's just say we've got a little bit of wind. We'd have that sheeted in there, maybe that sheeted there. Yeah. That looks pretty decent. Just seen the little boat here. It's not a dabber. I don't know what it is but it's actually sailing quite merrily. The, what I think is the Wayfair over there is struggling a bit, I don't know why, but that boat's sort of merrily pottering along. So, battery box. First thing I'm gonna do is get me a little voltmeter, get it on the DC volts. Oh, yeah, it was on AC because I was uh, having problems with the, the camper van on the holiday, all the electric supply to the camper van. Here's the battery, and I'm just going to stick these in to just check what voltage we got in here because that will tell me how full she is. So it is, and the answer is not very because 11.87 volts. Oh, so hang on, it's an 11.1 volt lithium ion battery, this. So, as a rough guide, it's six volts either side, isn't it? So that would mean she's full, actually. I have to double check that, but she's certainly not empty. So, um, loads of power to play with. So here's a box. It's, I mean, honest to God, it's so tiny compared to the old box. And it's, it's about half the size and about a tenth of the weight. So whilst I was quite proud of the old, the old wooden box that I made and fiberglassed, I'm not, you know, uh, uh, half of the reason I did that was because I wanted to, um, you know, practice my fiberglassing, because the more you do, the better you are. But the other part of me was, you know, I just wanted to, um, you know, sort of make something for the boat with my own hands. Now, this one, is, it's got a, this lip is a bit awkward, um, but you can see it's got little feet. So let's just see, you can get a bit of a view of that. It's got little feet and they're quite thickly fiberglass, but you can also maybe drill through those, but ideally we don't want to do that. So I'm thinking if we utilize that rear block, which seems to stick this in a spot and then somehow we utilize these blocks to sort of wedge it in you know somehow or we just try and get these off we've got other places we could put the box because of the side lack of you know here i can't put it the other side because of the bilge pump the issue with that is that the wires, I mean, it's not a big issue. The wires there would have to kind of come up here and all the way along um, and out because I can't, I don't really want to move everything the other side and I can't put the solar panel on the other side because of the bump kim. Another option, because we've got this lovely lip here, would be to, from the blocks, have a couple of lines or elastic going over maybe. So first job, we're going to see if we can get those blocks off. Yeah, some of you are probably going to squirm at me doing this. I don't know. Probably going to knock these off and pull all the fiberglass off the bottom of the boat. But just going to, this is just to see what we're contending with. Yeah, that's not moving. And then if we can just maybe do, do this and see if we can just crack it a little. Just see if we can ease it off. Ah, well that's a good start. 
but you can see where the the um, the epoxy is soaked into the wood here so the wood's actually just cracked off itself along the seam here that's a good start you know yes we'll have to tidy this up a bit but it's good that we can get that off let's try this other one try and crack a bit off that might bode okay there we go that. I think that might be a boat, but there's a tiniest, tiniest little bit there that can be remedied. Yeah, that's that's good. That's very good. There we go. And again, that's got a little. You can see this actually got paint underneath, so I don't think epoxying was brilliant. That one popped off quite easily as well. Can see again paint underneath so did I just put these on top of the paint maybe not the bottom one yeah yeah there's definitely paint underneath so either they didn't glue and seal properly which I find hard to believe because I pushed down a load of 404 to glue them down I got a funny feeling I must have epoxied these on top of the paint which uh, has worked out very fortuitously but perturbed that I thought that was a good idea I have to look back on the video see what when I did it but um, sometimes you're in a rush and you just want to get it done and that was the way it was so yeah I don't know I'm not sure about that we'll have to see Ooh, so I forgot I've got one of these straps with me I'm gonna actually mock this strap up because it may be we don't even need any blocks down there so let's try and get you in the picture here um, you can see there is a gap around the back of the rudder box. Now, this isn't miss, you know, super duper rigid, but I think it'll be okay to pop a strap around if we do it like this. Ooh, gosh, that's tight for me. I'm in the wrong angle there. You can see it goes right up to sort of, well, it goes right up to there. And then if we kind of get that, now that sort of height, it's a little bit long the strap is, but it is what it is. And then let's see just for a mock up how that, whoop, how that works. Might be a little twisted. There we go, and then we'll do it like that. So let's move because it's too, it's not big enough there. And it won't stop it falling out. Well, it might stop it falling out if it was tight enough. Yeah, if you went turtle. Um, to stop, to help, you could put something, stick it on here. So when it goes turtle, you've got something to hold the box in, give it a chance. Say when we go turtle, if we go turtle. We never go in turtle, but there we go. But to honest of you, if we could block that out at the back so it came here and did that we would have a secure box that i reckon would do we wouldn't even need anything i haven't brought my uh connectors or heat shrink or little torch blow torch with me i'm obviously not in the full swing of coming down here am i after the after the time off so uh can't go much further today and I think we'll make do with the tiller tamer to try and get sales up. If I'm sure we'll be fine. So I think what we then need to do is just understand how long these pieces need to be so we know where to reach the box. But again, these are quite short pieces, you know, and then they come up to there and then we'll be see so I'm gonna leave it about there so I think if we snip these this length I think we'll be quite safe and then what we'll do is snip that in the middle so we've got two so we've got two pieces long enough and then what I'd like is another piece 
which these are definitely, that's longer than the other piece. This piece will be, let me just double check this for a minute. Yeah, I'm hoping we can get another bilge pump, which will probably come here. So it would sit under here somewhere because we always seem to have water down here and in here. And at the front there, where the bilge pump is, where everyone told me the bilge needs to be, there's never any water there, because I think once I've sat at the back here, all the water comes to the back. So I think having the two bilges there and here, where the original bilge would be more like, would give us a drier boat. Um, and an electric bilge would be brilliant. And yeah, hopefully we'll have Battery Mark II ready, for, you know, ready for more adventures. And I think that's all I can think of doing today. Um, which is a good thing because, you know, the boat shouldn't have this many projects on. Oh, before we go, I just wanted to show you the, yeah, obviously this is now sealed up really lovely. So we need to kind of just give that a sand to get it for us. little tiny sharp bits there. Nice job that, I'm happy with that. Might even put a little bit of fiberglass on here next week and then we'll sand that and paint the whole bottom again and it'll look brand new, it looked lovely. Um, God, there's even a fly in here. <laughs> and then, yeah, and then I think really what we need to do is get on with some sailing now, because I'm itching to sail and try these new sails out as well. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, hope you enjoyed that one. Bit of a sketchy one, but we got there in the end. And uh, I look forward to seeing you next video where we'll be getting Lulu on the water and out sailing with all these other boats.